In this video, we'll look at asset data in Liferay Analytics Cloud. In Liferay DXP and Analytics Cloud, assets refer to different pieces of content that appear on site pages. These include blogs, forms, documents, and more. In Analytics Cloud, we can view data not only about the pages where the assets appear, but also about the individual assets and how visitors interact with them. To view data about assets, I'll go to the sidebar in my Liferay workspace, and under Touchpoints, I'll select Assets. Across the top, we now see five tabs for the different kinds of assets. Blogs, documents and media, forms, web content, and custom. Since this site has no blogs at the moment, we see a notification that no data was found for this asset type. I'll switch to a different workspace so we can see what the blogs tab looks like. Here, there's a list of all the blog entries with metrics for numbers of views, reading time, comments, and ratings. By default, the most viewed blog entry is at the top, but I can select any of the data points, views, reading time, comments, or rating to sort the blogs in ascending or descending order by that metric. At a glance, these metrics tell me how well a blog entry is doing and whether readers are engaging with it by commenting or leaving a rating. In the top right of the panel, I can change the time frame for the data to any of the preset ranges or to a custom range. And if I have a longer list and need to search for a blog, I can use the search bar to find it. If I select a blog entry, I'm taken to the overview page for the entry. I have five panels here, visitors behavior, audience, views by location, views by technology, and asset appears on. If you watch the video on page data, these will look very familiar. The visitors behavior panel summarizes how people interact with the blog with views, reading time, comments, and rating. We can change the time frame using the drop down in the right corner, and we can compare the time period to the previous time period. Audience tells us the breakdown of known versus anonymous individuals and of the known individuals, whether they are segmented or unsegmented, and what segments they might belong to. Views by location and views by technology tell us where our blog's entry visitors are located and what devices and browsers they use to visit the asset. And finally, the Asset Appears On panel tells us what page or pages our asset appears on and the URL to visit that page. If I want to see what other assets appear on the page, I can click that and view the page overview for that page. Let's go back to our main workspace. The next asset tab is Documents and Media. Documents and Media includes assets that site visitors see, like images, or download, like a PDF. Once again, there are several data points across the top of our list of documents. Downloads, which refers to the number of times a document is downloaded. Previews, which is the number of times a document is previewed. Comments, which is the number of comments left on a document. And rating. You may notice that we don't have many comments or ratings left on these documents. Some of these options require a user to sign in, and for this particular site, most of our visitors are anonymous, which means they don't have accounts. So we don't need to worry too much about the numbers for comments and ratings. As before, I can adjust the time frame using the dropdown, and I can search for a specific document using the search bar. If I select a document, I'm taken to the asset overview, and we'll see the same panels we saw with blogs. The key difference here is that our panels show data for downloads instead of views. So we see the number of downloads as our main metric for the visitor's behavior panel, downloads and segmented downloads in the audience panel, and downloads by location and by technology. Once again, we have the assets appear on panel at the bottom, which shows us where this particular document shows up on our site. Forms are another way we can gather information and data from users. The actual form submissions are stored in our Liferay instance, not in Analytics Cloud. 
but in Analytics Cloud, we can track how people interact with our forms. On this tab, we can see those important metrics, the number of submissions, number of views, the rate of abandonment, and how long it takes people to complete our forms. As before, we have this search and the timeframe filter that we can apply. If we look at the top form on this page, we'll see that in the last 30 days, there were 180 unique submissions, which took an average of about a minute and 46 seconds to complete, and that there were a little over a thousand views of the form. However, our form had an abandonment rate of 83%, which is a little bit on the high side. I'll select the form so we can see these numbers in more detail. Now that we're on the form overview page, we can see that our panels are again very similar to those we saw on the blogs and documents and media overviews. In the visitor's behavior panel, we see the same metrics as on the overview, the number of submissions, the number of views, the abandonment rate, and completion time. Below that, the audience panel provides a breakdown of who is submitting form responses, in this case, primarily anonymous individuals. Submissions by location and technology tell us where users are located and what device and browser they are on. So most of our users are in India, on a desktop, with Chrome. And at the very bottom of the page, we see the asset appears on panel, which lists every page where this form is used. You'll notice I skipped one panel, and that is the form abandonment panel. This panel is unique to forms. Here, I can see at what step of the form people are abandoning it. In this case, it's on the first step without filling out any information. On more detailed forms with multiple questions and pages, the form abandonment panel will show you which questions have the highest abandonment, so you can refine or omit those questions to improve completion rates. As with most panels on Analytics Cloud, I can change the time frame from the last 30 days to something like the last 90 days if I want to see what the abandonment trends are like over a longer period of time. The next tab is for web content. Web content articles are one of the ways that we can display information, usually text-based, to site visitors. We only have one metric for web content on this page, and that is views. Many of the web content pieces are used across several pages. For example, the social icons piece of web content. So the number of views gives us a total across all of those pages. As before, we can look at the specific asset overview to see which pages this asset appears on and what the statistics are like. The last tab is for custom assets. If you create a custom app, you can use events tracking in Analytics Cloud to gather specific data on how visitors interact with the app. We'll talk about events tracking in more detail in another video, but basically it allows us to track what our users are doing on the site. So if we have a custom app, we can use events tracking to see if users click, download, or otherwise engage with the app. And that concludes our look at assets in LifeRight Analytics Cloud.